The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1. Ecclesiastes means the gatherer. The words of the preacher. Capital P. Didn't know there was a preacher in the Old Testament, did you? The son of David. King, uh, king in Jerusalem. Solomon, the writer of the Proverbs, the writer of Ecclesiastes. Vanities of vanities with the preacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. That's the theme of the book. Emptiness, nothingness. What profit has a man of all his labor? which he taketh under the sun. Now that under the sun, that is the whole theme of the book. You don't go into the book of Ecclesiastes and have a theological doctrine. Solomon is writing in this book for 12 chapters, everything under the sun. And he's going to make some statements that are going to seem contradiction but he's writing it as a human man he's almost like a godly philo philosopher it is a holy philosophy of a philosopher and i don't mean the educated foolish greek philosophers or not. i mean it is holy it is right it's a man of god it's a man that got god's wisdom and knowledge and no direct revelation he writes to us as a man and that is how we're to take the whole book it's the reasoning of life so he says what profit has a man all of his labor Okay. He's going to end up in the grave. And that's where the book of Ecclesiastes stops, at the grave. It doesn't go off into Abraham's bosom, and it doesn't go off to heaven. And there's no church age. And in the Old Testament, say, if he's right, he went to Abraham's bosom. He didn't go to heaven. And he's writing as far as what the world and earth and life a man works his entire life as a rich man, as a fool in Proverbs diet. He ends up in a hole in the ground. That's vanity. That's not how it was intended before Genesis 3. There was to be no death. One generation passes away, death. And another generation cometh, birth. But the earth abideth forever. Now we know, Peter says, we know the scriptures say that the earth is going to the fervent heat, the, 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 the heaven is going to roll up his scroll. We know that. Solomon didn't. It? So don't go running to Solomon and we'll see, you know, the earth abideth forever, Mother Earth and all that. We have revelation from the New Testament from Peter. Revel uh, the book of Revelation itself, Jesus himself, heaven and earth will pass away. Solomon did not have that information. And that when we get to things like that in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon does not have that revelation that we have. Solomon did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matter of fact, most of the books from Ezra... <laughs> all the way on to Revelation. He don't have. There's no Jonah. There's no Esther. He wrote Proverbs. The sun also rises. And it does. Get out. Look at these. You watch the sky rise. The sun rise. And the sun goeth down. And hastes to his place where he arose. Solomon says, sun gets up in the east and goes down the west, and at night is very quick. 
quickly through the night, that sun's right back where it was the next day. Life is quick. That's what you just said. He hastes to his place when it, when he, the sun, rose. From the time it went down, sunset, to where it comes back up, that was a quick night. Life is quick. The wind goes towards the south and turns about to the north and whirls about continually. And the wind returns again according to his circuit. Solomon tells us in approximately 977 BC, the wind has circuits. So if you were to turn on the weather channel map, your news and the weather forecast, you would see they have diagrams of little arrows and pointy things and little waves. And, and that's exactly what Solomon is talking about. And I'll make a comment in verse 7. I'll make a comment with 6 and 7. But we'll move on to seven. All the rivers run into the sea. Yet the sea is not full. For him would be the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Sea of Galilee. Unto the place whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Evaporation, precipitation. B.C. 977. And that rules out. How people in education think, well, how stupid those people were back in the olden age. They didn't know nothing like we know. Solomon knew that there were circuits of wind that you see on the weather map. Solomon knew that it rains and all goes down to the sea and the sea evaporates. He knows the evaporation table. He knows it. They were not ignorant as much as education would put these men and women they knew more than what we know. Because they can't even explain Stonehenge. They can't explain the Sphinx. And they can't explain the, the, the pyramids in Egypt. They got the foggiest idea. How on earth? And there are many other things on the earth that they look at like, how? I guarantee Solomon knew. Because they listened to God. All things are full of labor. Everything works. All the animals work. Man works. Man cannot utter it. You can't explain gravity. There are things beyond the comprehension. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. The eye wants to see more. And television gets you to that. Stay tuned to the next time our show when you'll find out if Alice and Phil run off to get married. Will Tom have his surgery? Tomorrow on our show, we'll bring in guest stars of people who were on the moon. Oh, I gotta be there. Next week's contestants. Oh, I gotta see that. What are you talking about? Nor the ear filled with hearing. Radio. CDs. Albums. Tapes. Gotta get that new album. Gotta get what the, the new song. Gotta get... The thing that has been past. The thing that has been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. That's the first rule of thermodynamics. There is nothing whether it may be, may be said, see, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before. You see, we got smartphones. No, you've always had communication. And we even see in the early books before Solomon and in Solomon's time that there would be battles and Joab would send a man, hey, this is the message I have for King David. 
sender. And we even see that there was a man that brought good news and there was a man that looks like he brought bad news. Depending on the man that when David or the man at, at the gate was saying, I see, okay, he's a good man. He's got good news. All right, we can send it wireless. Well, so was sending a, a man running to the king with wireless. Oh, you know, you see the great postal service we have today. They were sending letters. Esther, they sent letters out by dromedaries, camels, asses, everything. There's nothing new. Well, you know, we got fast cars. Well, they had fast camels called dromedaries. They got around on four feet. We get around on four tires. There's nothing new. Well, you know, we got the Frangle kitchen gadgets. They were cooking food as far as back when 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 God told Noah, you can eat me. And maybe Adam and Eve, maybe they cooked some of the fruit. I don't know. It's nothing new. It all comes under transportation, communication, cooking. They, oh, the, the great ex, the things of, of education, it's, uh, it's under education. One plus one has always been two, unless you've got common. We go on to the moon. I don't think he went to the moon, but we got the International Space Station. And yet the Bible tells us that there are principalities and powers in high places. I'm one of them ones that believe that the, the sons of men in, in Genesis are the are the, 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 the angels that come down. There are devil there are angels that go up and down. Jesus told Nathan L, Jacob saw angels going up and down. Ezekiel will be transported around. Elijah was taken up. There's nothing new. Rapture. Enoch was raptured. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither is there any, neither is there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Where is Solomon's house? It's gone. Where was Eve's clothing? It's gone. Where will the White House be? It'll be gone. Whatever it is today, and, and, and by Peter, the revelation is, in Jesus, the heaven and earth is just going to melt up with a fervent heat. Solomon don't know that. But it's gone. Everything that will be done for Jesus is what gets rewarded. I, the preacher, run back to verse 1, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. So that's Psalm. I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things. I, I am going out and I, I'm going to use my time and I'm, I'm going to study things. And we'll learn it out through the 12 chapters of Equally Asked. All things that are done under heaven. Now get that. That goes with under the sun, verse 3. We're not going to get any heavenly re uh, uh, revelation of the book of Ecclesiastes. We are not going to know what goes on the death of the grave. Everything that was the wisdom of man walking on the earth, past, present, and future, Noun, verb, adjective, right now, right here. This is sore travail has God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. There's pain, suffering. This is the metaphysics. Here it is. And here it is with pain and suffering. Now he says travail that God has given. Well, yes, God giveth evil. But it was caused by Adam and Eve. 
When God told Adam, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And it's just countless work. Man, birds, wind, rain, all the works, all the events, all the labors. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. A bird miraculously builds a bird's nest. Wow, intrigue. What's that bird's nest going to be in a lifetime of man? Let's say a baby's born, a bird builds a, a nest for his, his young and his own. That man dies 70 or 80 years old. What do you think? What about that bird's nest? It'll be gone. The labor of a bird. Empty. Vanity. Empty. Vexation. It's an irritation. Irritant. Everything that man does, and it just goes to the grave. It decays. It rots. And that's not what God had intended for man. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. Futurism. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. Everybody wants something. And you get something. And you want more. No satisfaction. I commune with my own heart. I talk with my heart. <laughs> heart, yes, Solomon. Now, Jeremiah says the heart is wicked, and, and who can know it? But you got to remember, Solomon was given the heart of knowledge and wisdom of God. I am come to a great estate. He is the king of Jerusalem, of north and south, Israel and Judah. They haven't split yet. I have gotten more wisdom than all that have been before me of God. In Jerusalem, yea, my heart, not his head, not his head, his heart. Get that. He said, I got, I got wisdom. It's in my heart, not my head. The world's got it wrong. It's not head knowledge. It's heart knowledge. And had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. No understanding. Now real quick. Job 28, 28. Real quick. He had no understanding. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Some is going to marry all kinds of wives and fall into false gods and false worship. Why? He had no understanding. I think that's also the same sin of the devil, I think. And I gave my heart to no wisdom and to no madness and folly. Foolishness, craziness. And I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. It's an irritation. I can be wise, I can be smart, I can, you know, I can know it all. It didn't do me no good. I can be crazy, I can be a lunatic, and I can, it doesn't do me anything. I can be a fool, I can be stupid. It don't do me anything. We all end up in a grave. For in much wisdom, it's much grief. The more you know, the more grief. That's exactly the story with Adam and Eve. Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
And what happened in Adam and Eve when they got the knowledge of the good and evil? They knew about death. They knew about sin. They knew about pain. They knew about sorrow. They knew about hospitals and fire trucks and, and death. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So if I had all the smartness of all the world, only going to make me sadder. You know, a Christian can get all the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Bible. And go out into the, into the world and preach the gospel. And yeah, I can teach the Bible. I can educate the Bible. I mean, the, the Christians. I can grow Christians. I can go preach the gospel. And what I know of the Bible is not going to get them saved. And the people I preach to, the Bible says many will go the way of the broad way that leads us to destruction. And the tears are not wiped away to, to Revelation 21 or 22. I always forget which one. Listen, right now my dad is unsaved and has never gotten saved. Yeah, as far as I know. I hope I'm wrong. And he secluded his life. And I've witnessed to him. He's the very first person I witnessed to. I was saved April 25th, 1987. I witnessed to my dad April 26th, 1987. I've been witnessing as much as I could. One time I, I sent two or three preachers to his hospital room. I called upon one. I didn't know I got an answer. I called upon another. And both of them went to go see him. Now, I've done what I could right now and still trying to, the best I can for everything for my dad. But if I see my dad get cast off in the lake of fire by Jesus Christ, I mean, my hands are not going to have the blood on them. But you, you're not telling me I'm not going to weep when the tears are wiped away after the great white throne judgment. You're telling me I'm not going to weep when I watch my father, get, if he doesn't ever get saved, Watch my father go off into the lake of fire to burn forever. Hey, listen, listen, listen. You want to know all, you know, you want to know a lot about Jacob's trouble in the tribulation period? Come talk to me. I, I know things about it and there are things I don't know. We just went through 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs. And we did a pretty well good job. I hope the Lord was pleased. People liked the study last night we did of the virtuous woman. That's not going to get my dad saved. That doesn't eliminate my mom and the suffering she has with, with MS. That doesn't get rid of the cancers of the people in my church that have cancer. Man, I wish I had the knowledge to get rid of the cancers and the people in the church, but I... And yet, I was told the other day that somebody was going to tell me out of the book of Ecclesiastes, much knowledge and you know is it, a hindrance, and it, I think that's chapter twelve when we get to it. Much study, wherever it is, or even right, maybe right here. You study the Bible too much. That's what I'm trying to say. And yet, what's the commandment by God? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be chained, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and I am studying, I put myself to studying the word of God. And I can have a Bible study with one person, with my daughter, on a Friday afternoon in the park. And that person can look at me and say, well, I never saw that. And remember, before you go run into the book of Ecclesiastes again, doctrine, not much doctrine in the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, let's take verse 18 real quick and we'll close. 
we'll go back to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. <clears throat> now let's look at the heavenly. Then we'll close. Verse 3. Proverbs 30 verse 3. I neither learn wisdom or have knowledge of the holy. I have knowledge and wisdom of some holiness. Not all. Now what Solomon doesn't tell us in the book of Ecclesiastes, what we learn today through Paul and Jesus and James and throughout all the scriptures. I know what God expects from me. And if I do properly what God expects from me, I know how to go in the world and preach the gospel. That's wisdom. That's knowledge. That's understanding. I'm going to get gold, silver, and precious stones, inheritance, and crowns when I when I come from the judgment seat of Christ. So don't go running into the book of Ecclesiastes. Oh, I'm going to put you in your place. Now, much learning will also help you gurn for the Lord Jesus Christ to say, well done. How do you know well done? Well, I remember when I grew up in grade school and going through school. And, you know, if I wrote all of my A's right, and I could count and write one to ten on my piece of paper, I get a little happy face from my teacher. And sometimes it was written excellent, or one of the things they would write, well done. I studied my alphabet. I studied my spelling word. And I would go to school and I would get a, a hundred. I would get a ninety. I would get a happy face. I get a sticker. Good boy. Why? Because I learned. You can't. I, I'm defending myself. That's what I'm doing. You can't. Oh, you can't learn. Well, God's used me to learn. Plain and simple. <clears throat> 